Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video, you're going to be solving two problems from the chapter Properties and Matter from the book Pathfinder. So these two questions are based on the topic of surface tension. So first we'll start with Will You Understanding 7. Okay guys, so in this question we have a film of soap solution uh, created in loop formed by rectangular wire frame and an inextensible light thread AB of length L. It pulls the thread in the shape of a semicircle. If the force F applied at midpoint of the thread perpendicular to the line segment AB turns the wire into two semicircles circles then calculate the surface tension of the soap solution so when no external force f was applied the thread took the form of a semicircle something like this and when an external force of f was applied it took the form of two semicircles of something like this so we have to determine the surface tension of the fluid okay guys so let's say this is a rough sketch of our thread ab and the length of the wire was given as l so i can say l equals pi r so from here we can get the radius of the semicircle as l by pi Okay, okay guys, so now what I'll do is draw horizontal at some angle theta from the horizontal. I'm going to consider a very small element of angular width d theta and the length of this small element is going to be r d theta. Now the surface tension force is going to pull on this dl element in the normal direction. So the net force we can consider it to be in this direction that is along the normal to this dl length passing through the center. So and the magnitude of this is going to be the surface surface tension which I'm considering it as sigma dl which is going to be r d theta. But guys we have to multiply this with a factor of 2 as this is a soap solution. So there will be two liquid air surfaces. Two surfaces uh, that will be applying the surface tension force. So if I observe this small element from this side, let's say this is the cross section, surface tension will be pulling on this element from either of these sides and hence uh, the factor of 2. So from here we can say the small df force acting on the element is going to be 2 sigma times rd theta. The thing is we only care about the net force in the vertical direction, right? Because the horizontal direction we can see by symmetry it cancels out anyway. Angle of the element with the horizontal is theta. This angle is going to be 90 minus theta. So the vertical component will be sine theta. Okay, so now let's just integrate this expression. So I'll get the vertical force in the y direction due to surface tension. Um, integral of r sine theta d theta now this is a very interesting term guys so r sine theta was the small length that we considered right and and the normal to the element made an angle theta with the horizontal which means the tangent will make an, an angle of theta with the vertical so which basically means even this angle over here is going to be theta so if you observe something r sine theta is just the horizontal component of our length so that is basically the horizontal projection we can call it as dx if you want so if i integrate all of these dx elements basically what we obtain is the diameter of the loop uh, i mean this integral is pretty simple anyway so anyway so uh, otherwise you can simply integrate from 0 to pi it's a simple integral anyway so just the final answer comes out to be 2r it, it just depends on the diameter so from here the fy force comes out to be 4 sigma r okay guys so in the second scenario the midpoint is being pulled by a force of f okay so one more thing i want to cover here guys so if you uh, consider the center of curvature of the semicircular wire as point o so there will be reactions at point a and b right so let's call it as ra and rb so if you observe about the point o then the torque due to the surface tension force is zero and the reason for that is if you consider a dl element something like this as we considered the surface tension force was normal to the element right so and that passes through the point o and hence the torque due to, due to surface tension has to be zero the net torque has to be zero which basically means the ra has to be equal to rb i mean that we can also observe from symmetry as well so that was just a point to consider so from here like if i consider the half fbd if i separate this out and if i want to draw the fbd of either of the half separately then at this uh, point the net force up upward force is going to be f by 2 and over here the force is going to be f by 2 due to the thing that we discussed in the previous page the force over here is going to be f by 2 as well and similarly by symmetry we can say the force over here is going to be f by 2 okay now the thing is the surface tension force um, due to the semicircular arc we just discussed in the previous page it the net downward force was simply equal to 2t because of the two surfaces multiplied by the diameter and in this case the diameter is simply r so this is is going to be 2tr. So from here we can say that f by 2 plus f by 2 which is simply f has to be equal to 2tr and r itself if you guys remember was equal to l by pi and from here we get the surface tension t pi f divided by 2l okay which is the answer to this problem now let's move on to the next question okay guys so now let's do check your understanding question number four so in this question we have a glass plate that is inserted vertically in water and water rises along the plate making its surface 
close to the plate curved as shown in the figure okay so basically the water surface becomes curved and uh, this is the result of the adhesive forces due to the water liquid interaction so we have to find the expression for the height to which water rises along the plate so we have to find this height over here the surface tension density of water and acceleration due to gravity are all given okay guys so let's begin and i'll also discuss an extra problem that could be asked in this particular question so first let's find out the height edge Okay guys, so now let's consider a fluid element over here. So basically what we did is we slice the fluid at some particular point over here and we drew its FPD. So it's going to look something like this. So the surface tension force is going to pull along this line in this particular direction and it's and if you take a DL length, the force is going to be T times DL, right? And similarly the surface tension force is going to pull on the on this line over here as well. And here also the magnitude is again going to be TDL, but but if you observe it from the side view, it is going to be uh, in this particular direction. So and let's let's consider this inner inward length to be L. So this force is going to be is going to be sigma times L. And similarly, even this is going to be sigma times L. So we successfully marked forces due to surface tension. Okay, guys. So now we have to mark down the pressure forces. Uh, also in the vertical direction, there will be the weight of this fluid element. But but in this question, we are only considering the horizontal forces. So let's just forget about the weight. Okay guys, uh, for the pressure forces contribution, we can actually ignore net force due to atmospheric pressure. And the reason for that is that atmospheric pressure is acting throughout the fluid element. It is acting everywhere. So the integral of PDA simply cancels each other out as it forms a closed loop, right? So we can just ignore P0 and work with gauge pressures. So as I mentioned, at each point along this horizontal, the force is P0. So the pressure, the gauge pressure at the bottom is going to be zero, right? Because each point is at atmospheric pressure. Similarly, each point on the fluid layer is also at atmospheric pressure. So we can ignore that as well. This point over here is at atmospheric pressure. But as we go up uh, along a fluid column, we know that the pressure is going to decrease, right? So let's just consider this height to be H. So the pressure varies from P0 at the bottommost point to P0 minus rho GH uh, at the topmost point. But as we are working with gauge pressures, uh, it actually varies from zero to minus rho GH. Now guys, minus rho GH does not mean it is vacuum. What it essentially means is that the net pressure, which is usually compressive in nature, pressure, the pressure force, which is compressive in nature, uh, all we have to do is make it pulling in nature. Okay, so that's the only difference. P0 minus rho GH is the absolute pressure, right? That does not mean it's negative pressure. Okay, so now how do we write down the forces? So we know that if we have a vertical wall, something like this. The net force on the wall, if we can write it as the pressure at the centroid times the area of this particular wall. We know that the pressure linearly varies from zero to minus rho gh. So the pressure at the center is going to be minus rho gh by two, right? And I am going to get rid of the minus. Because all it means is the force is towards the left. This multiplied by the area of cross section, area. So area is going to be h, which is the length times the inward length L that we consider. So these are the only horizontal forces acting on the system. So now we can write down the equilibrium equation. So this angle is going to be theta. So now we can simply say that the net force towards the left equals to the net force towards the right. And from here, we'll get the maximum height raised as this particular value. So now I'll explain the extra problem that I was talking about. So clearly we can see that this surface over here is curved, right? Each DL uh, element associated uh, with this curve is going to be associated with some curve and it will have some radii of curvature, right? So let's say if so, if I consider some element over here, this is going to be associated with some arc like this and it's going to have some radii of curvature. So the question is we have to find the radii of curvature of such a DL element that is at a height of h by 2. So this arc will be part of some circle. So we have to find the radii of curvature at the point h by 2 from the horizontal plane. For this problem, we are going to use this particular view. So let's say we consider some small patch which looks something like this at that particular height of r by 2. So now we can use Young-Laplace equation uh, in this small patch over here. From the side view, the radii of curvature is going to be something like this. The radii of curvature of the other side, which is going to be this. So there'll be two. So these two are the principal radii of curvatures of this particular element. So if you remember how we derived the Young-Laplace equation, we took some arbitrary element like this on the, on the fluid surface and we did a force balance equation on that. So basically, uh, like if you want me to do the force balance, then then if, uh, if you observe the side view of that small element over here, surface tension at this point is, uh, going, to be, is going to be along the tangent. Some Something like this. The force is going to be T times DL and I'm considering this length as a DL. Similarly even this force is going to be TDL. So this will result in a net non-zero force towards the center, right? Now if you do exactly the same analysis for the other side, let's say this length is DL2. 
So we can see that the surface tension forces act in this particular direction. So this is going to be T times DL2. So it cancels each other out. So as you can see, there is no contribution in this particular case. And that's the reason why, if you remember the young Laplace equation, we took the excess pressure uh, when we go from the concave side to the convex side, which I'll explain in a bit what I meant is was actually equal to sigma times 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2. So in this particular case, this principal radii of curvature is going to be r tending to infinity, right? Because it's just a straight line. So if you put r tending to infinity for r2, as you, you can see, there is no contribution due to sigma times 1 by r2 in the excess pressure case. And that's because it just cancels each other out. Whereas for this particular principal radii of curvature, there is going to be some non-zero force towards the center of curvature. So most of you probably are used to this particular FBD. So let's consider this angle to be the theta. And we know, and let's just assume the radii of curvature as capital R. If you remember in Newton's laws of motion, when we had two tension forces uh, that is acting at an angle of d theta, then the force was actually towards the center of curvature and its magnitude was T d theta, right? So in this case, the net force will be towards the center of curvature and the magnitude is going to be TDL, which is the force multiplied by d theta. So now we consider this length to be DL2, right? DL2 doesn't sound good. Let's just take it as DL prime. Okay, let's just change this. Take this as DL prime. So now we can write DL prime as R multiplied by d theta, right? So I'm gonna replace d theta from this and write it as DL prime divided by capital R. So basically this DF is the force that surface tension applies on this fluid element over here. So now the thing is, if you want the pressure, all we have to do is divide the force with the area of this patch and that and that is going to be DL multiplied by DL prime. So as you can see, as you can see, DL and DL prime just cancels out and the DF by DA, which is the pressure exerted by the surface tension force on this fluid layer, it will come out to be T divided by R. If you observe the, if you put small R1 as capital R, which is the principal radii of curvature number one and principal radii of curvature number two, which is the straight line pretty much. If you put that is equal to zero infinity, then you'll get exactly the same expression. So, I mean, th this is exactly how we derive young Laplace equation as well, right? We just do a force balance. So now we know the pressure exerted by the surface tension force. Now, who is the other force? And that is going to be the, you know, pressure difference between the outside of the fluid and the inside of the fluid, right? So let's try to figure that out. Okay guys, so now let's figure out the pressure difference. So we know the pressure at this point is P naught. So the pressure over here, that is the pressure at the required point is going to be P naught minus rho g h by 2, right? Because as we are going up, the pressure is going to decrease by a factor of rho g h. But just outside, we know that the pressure is P0. And as we can see that as we go in through the concave side, the pressure, as we can see, decreases. So, and that is going to be balanced by the surface tension pressure that we just dis discussed over here. So we can say the surface tension pressure, which is sigma by r, is going to be equal to P0 minus P0 minus rho g h by 2. And after solving this, and after solving this expression, we'll get the radii of curvature at that point as two sigma divided by rho g h. And h, uh, we just determined it a while ago, right? So yeah, that was it for this video, guys. In the future, we'll take up more problems. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and share the video to your friends. And that's it. Thanks for watching.